Well, hello and boom shakalaka. Rob Hamilton from Soul Canyon Training and Development here with a tutorial, an Excel tutorial, on Excel's basic financial functions. The ones I want to show you over the next few minutes are the payment function, future value, present value, and then net present value and internal rate of return. And really, I have two motivations for putting these out. Every once in a while, when I'm teaching a live Microsoft Excel class, we have a couple of examples of tools that we can use in Excel that refer to these functions but don't really quite teach them. So I'm just going to go ahead and teach these as supplemental information for people that are wondering how they're put together. The other motivation is I teach a class called Reading and Understanding Financial Statements. And towards the end of that class, we explain a little bit about how to evaluate capital investment decisions and using the principles of net present value or the tools of net present value and internal rate of return. And when I teach that, I often find the need to go way upstream and explain the concepts behind basic financial functions, the time value of money, and things like that. So it's in that spirit that I want to teach the basic financial functions in Excel that do things like calculate payments and things like that. So we're going to start with the payment function. Let's say we have a situation here where we have a car loan, and the car loan is going to be for $20,000. The interest rate on the car loan is 5%, and we want to finance that over 48 months. In Excel, every formula or function starts with equals, and this one is PMT. And what the payment function needs is it needs a rate. Now, here's what you have to remember. There's a few little nuances uh, in dealing with the financial functions. The first one is if we're going to be calculating a monthly payment to pay back a car loan, and we have an annual interest rate. It's looking for the rate right now, so we're going to click on rate. But we're going to divide that by 12 to get the uh, monthly interest rate. So everything's going to be stated in months. Comma, the next thing it's looking for is the number of periods. That's going to be 48. Comma, and then the last thing it wants is PV, which is the actual amount of the loan. Now, let me close this off. Let me show you something that happens with financial functions. When I go ahead and hit enter on that, it calculates a negative payment of $460.59, which when you think about the direction that the money is moving, you're receiving a loan to buy a car for $20,000, so that's a positive thing to you, and then you're paying back uh, the loan by paying money out, which is negative to you, of $460.59 per month. The thing is, most people don't want to see a negative loan amount calculated. So there's a couple different ways of dealing with it. We could go up here to the loan amount and put a minus in front of the loan amount and then the payment would calculate as a positive number. Most people don't like that either so let's take that out of there. Put that back in there's 20,000. Let's just go inside the function and this cell reference right here that refers to the purple box there that refers to the loan amount. Let's just put a minus in front of that and that will actually show then a positive uh, monthly payment. Now, if we want to calculate what the total of all the payments are going to be over 48 months, that's a simple multiplication. 48 times the monthly payment will give us $22,108. And then on a $20,000 loan, if we want to know how much of that is going to be interest, then we'll just take that minus the original $20,000 loan. We'll say that over the life of that loan, we will have paid $2,108 in interest. So that's the payment function. Very, very handy for anticipating what a monthly car payment would be, a monthly house payment would be. If you just change the numbers up here to financing a $200,000 mortgage, and you're going to do your mortgage maybe at a slightly lower interest rate, 0.0425, and you're going to finance that over 15 years. You could just say equals 15 times 12 would be the monthly payments. And that would be a monthly payment principal and interest of uh, $1,504.56. So if you know the basics of how to put that function together, you can anticipate without having a loan officer or someone have to do that calculation for you. We're going to switch now to the future value function. Uh, let's say that we have, I'm just going to go ahead and delete this. We're going to build the future value function. Let's say that we're going to be putting $1,000 a month away, that we're going to be earning 8% on our retirement portfolio, and we have 20 years to retirement. We want to know what this retirement fund is going to be worth 20 years into the future. 
So Microsoft Excel has a function called future value that will calculate uh, what a stream in this case of monthly investments would be worth uh, in this case 20 years in the future. So equals FV for future value. We open the print on that. The first thing it wants is a rate. So once again, it's 8% annually tax deferred that we're earning on our portfolio, but we're talking about a monthly investment. So we're going to go ahead and divide that by 12 to get a monthly rate, comma. Number of periods, that's the NPER. We're going to take 20 years, but since we're going to be making a monthly payment, we're going to multiply that times 12 to get what that uh, would be in terms of how many payments uh, per year for 20 years. And then comma, we're going to uh, click on the payment. And once again, we're going to have that negative problem. So let's go ahead and put a minus in front of the payment because the money's going out. And then we'll go ahead and put the parentheses on that and we'll hit enter. And that will tell us that we're going to have $589,020 at the end of 20 years. Now you can mess around with this. You can say, okay, well, how about if I increase my monthly investment to $1,500? Well, that's going to be $883,531. Let's say I want to work for five more years. And let's say maybe I could bump my uh, interest rate that I'm earning on my investments up to 10% tax deferred. So you can see playing with these numbers will allow you in this case to do retirement planning for when you're going to retire a certain number of years into the future. Now let's turn our attention to the present value function. So here's the deal with this. Let's say we're looking at buying a house that we want to uh, rent out. So we're going to rent it out. And let's say we anticipate that we're going to be able to earn $1,500 on monthly rent from our renters, but we're going to have some monthly expenses. Let's just put that in at 200. So net net as investors in a rental property, uh, let's say we're going to anticipate getting $1,300 per month in. Let's say we're going to have to get a mortgage to do this. That's going to be 4.9% and we want to get a 30-year mortgage. So we want to kind of analyze what these cash flows would be worth uh, over, the life of the, uh, over the life of the loan. And further, we anticipate that at the end of this 30-year period, this house is going to be worth $200,000. What we want to know is how much we should pay for this house. We're going to calculate a total value. The total value is going to be in two parts. The value of the income stream of $1,300 per month for 30 years, at 4.9% and what that $200,000 in the future, 30 years in the future, would be worth to us today. So we're going to take those 30 years worth of uh, income payments, rental payments minus monthly expenses, and anticipate what the value of the property is going to be worth in 30 years. We just want to know what all that would be worth to us today. So in this case, we're going to use the present value function in two slightly different ways. Equals PV. Now, the first thing it wants to know is the rate. So we're talking about months here again. So we're going to divide that by 12, comma. And that's the mortgage rate. That's the rate we're going to have to pay on the mortgage in order to be able to, uh, to buy this house, this income property house. Uh, the number of periods is going to be 30 years times 12. And the uh, payment is going to be the net here. So we're going to put a minus in front of this payment and put the right parenthesis in and this will tell us what all that would be worth to us today two hundred and forty four thousand nine hundred and forty seven dollars now the other thing we have to get is what is this property that we anticipate is going to sell for two hundred thousand dollars thirty years from now going to be worth to us today the actual property itself if we sold it so we're going to say equals PV and then we're going to use that same rate divided by 12. And then we're going to say number of periods is that 30 years times 12 months per year. Now there's no payment in this case. So I'm just going to hit another comma to take me to future value. And that's where we're going to put a minus in front of what we think that property is going to be worth for us uh, in 30 years. Put the right parenthesis on that. And this says today a $200,000 property in the 30 years from now, today it'd be worth $46,000 to us. Let's be a little more realistic. If we're going to buy a house that is going to um, deliver to us 
$1,500 per month in rental income. It's probably 200,000 or more today probably be something we'd have to do some type of valuation appreciation type exercise but it's probably going to be worth more like four hundred thousand dollars 30 years from now or more and we could play around with this but that means that the value of the house to us today would be ninety two thousand. so the total value of the property from the standpoint of the uh, income value the rental income value and the residual value of the house itself would mean that today we would be willing to pay a total of $337,193. So we could just put a little double underline under that. So the whole idea behind the present value function is if you take a stream of future cash flows and bring them back to today to tell you what they would be worth today if they're going to, in fact, yield or at least cover the cost of a loan to pay for that particular house. So that's present value. Now, the last one I want to show you is internal rate of return and net present value. Let's say that we have a piece of equipment, let's say a color copier that we might want to buy. Uh, the color copier is going to cost us $10,000. Now, the reason that we might buy that color copier is we're a print shop and we're going to be able to sell color copies to our customers. We're going to have some costs associated with running this printer. We're going to have the, the price that we sell the color prints for, let's say, 50 cents per page. But we anticipate that that's going to give us additional net income of $3,000 for three years and $2,000 for two years. Now, we're going to have to pay $10,000 for the piece of equipment. And then cumulatively, as we get these future cash flows, at the end of the five-year life of the printer, uh, we've netted $3,000. The thing is, we're not taking into account the fact that we've got to cover a 6% uh, equipment loan rate. And so what we need to do is we need to discount, we need to bring back to the present the fut these future cash flows and state them in today's terms. So what I've done simplistically here is, let me just unhide a couple of columns. Uh, let's actually unhide now all these columns. I accidentally hid those. Let's unhide all of them. I've taken this same set of cash flows here. But now what I've done is I've done them in present value terms. So $3,000 one year from now at 6% is worth $2,830 to us today. 3,000 two years from now, all I'm doing is taking into account the 6% and calculating the present values of those in today's terms. Now, when I add all those up, I'm still positive. So the tool, see the 1,098 down here, the tool that will actually do this for you automatically is called, in, is called net present value. So let's see how net present value goes together. Equals NPV, net present value. What we need to tell it is the rate. That's an annual rate, and we have annual returns here, so we're cool with leaving that as an annual rate. Comma, then we need to highlight the actual cash flows that we want it to discount into the future. And it will take into account how many years into the future those cash flows are. And then what we're going to have to add is the upfront cash flow, the negative number we're going to have to pay for this printer. When we hit enter on that, 1,098. Same number as this right here. But that's done in one nice tight little function. Net present value means the summation of all the individual present values of the futures cash flows brought back to today net of an original investment, in this case $10,000. Now another companion financial function that will actually tell you the rate of return that a complete set of cash flows is actually returning is called internal rate of return, and it's very easy to set up. It gives you the internal or inherent rate of return of an investment. Let's see how that works equals IRR, internal rate of return. It just wants to know the full stream of values, so the negative value and all the positive values. And then it wants you to guess or start it off with a rate of return that it can use to start discounting those cash flows. When you put that, we're just going to put in the rate of return we use for net present value, a reference to it. So now all we have to do is hit enter on that. And it's 10.3%, meaning that this set of cash flows right here 
is actually returning 10.3% to us. Now, the cool thing about 10.3% is if you have a limited amount of capital and you want to pick the highest rates of return, then you could rank these internal rates of return and invest in the set of products or in the set of projects in this case that gives you the highest rates of return. Just kind of rank them according to their internal rate of return. So that is an introduction to Excel's basic financial functions. Payment, future value, present value, and internal rate of return and net present value. As usual, if you have any questions at all about these functions, please feel free to drop me an email at rob at soulcanyon.com or visit our website, soulcanyon.com. The other thing is we have a complete set of Excel training tutorials called Excel Essentials. If you simply go out to our website, we'll tell you all about it. There's over 50 tutorials, four downloadable workbooks. Please check it out. If you have any questions at all about anything, I am here to help. Until then, it's Boom Shakalaka from Rob Hamilton at Soul Canyon Training and Development.